So, Mark, uh, in the week that the Daily Mail mm -hmm. uh, was in trouble with the snowflakes due to the paper chase scandal, they've now done something that I think the snowflakes will like, which is they parted company with the dreaded Katie Hopkins, whose contract uh, was not renewed and she left by new mutual agreement. She's been she was the, resigned. Yes, yeah, she was resigned, I think okay. it's probably fa yeah. safe to say. She's been there for a couple of years. I heard rumours she was on 250 grand a year. So there may be other reasons why they got rid of her. But it's interesting that this woman, who many of the um, Stop Funding Hate Brigade would say espouses exactly what the Daily Mail stands for, uh, furious right-wing fervour, uh, and yet they've dropped her. Uh, so I wonder what Stop Funding Hate will say about the uh, departure of Casey Hopkins. Will they stand up and say, well done, Daily Mail, for getting rid of, of course this, this mistress of hatred? Of course they will. <laughs> Listen, you know, it's a pragmatic decision. Surely the Daily Mail are a strong, it's a strong newspaper title with a very, you know, pronounced opinion about everything that happens in this country and around the world. There's one reason they would have got her, and that's financial, because if they're losing advertisers, they have to they have to ask they have to act quick, and and I think that she had become the pinnacle or the tip of that boil they had to lance. I think if we're going to let a, a sort of small group on social media, because it is a small group, yeah, I know. it still does not rep represent the wide body politic of this country. It's a it's a it's a minute group, and of course people see it as some sort of pulse that they've got to react to, that it's, it, it's, it's yeah. ticking away. And they're, they're, they are uh, fueled by that tired old incorrect myth that if you're right wing, you are heartless and mean and vicious. And if you're left wing, you're lovely and you care for things, you know, and you're full of love. And if you're on the right, you're full of hate. So that's a load of old bollocks. But I don't want to get involved. That's a, that's a, no, no, but, but that's a load of old bollocks. And another thing I'd like to say is I, I, I like hate. I spend a lot of time hating things. I am fueled by hate. And I don't want organisations saying stop funding hate. I'm starting an organisation called Start Funding Hate. <laughs> Let's keep, let's keep it going, you know, that's what gets a lot of us through well, the day. The, 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 uh, but, the, the know, troll farms the are, are doing a very good job of that. But I don't want to get involved with defending... But I think you're wrong. I think you're wrong that the only reason that Katie Hopkins was dumped was because of, was uh, for financial reasons. It, it, it's because she uh, was more trouble than that she's worth. And I think the interesting thing is that when you put amateurs into national newspapers, or national online newspapers, you are dicing with peril. Uh, the True. And what her, co her, what all she ever did was she took any subject, immigrants, uh, boat people coming in from Syria, uh, uh, terrorism, and tried to say the most shocking, kind of basically well, racist thing. it was an easy way to earn possible. money. Yeah, 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 it, yeah, it yeah, didn't but, take yeah, any thought, it, it? Well, Yeah, exactly, but it proves that being a controversial columnist is a lot more difficult than she took it for. And it makes you realise that people like the brilliant Richard Littlejohn and the excellent Rod Little uh, really skillfully walk a very difficult tightrope. When you're being controversial and you're right on the cold face of controversy, you put one foot wrong and you're finished. She barely put a foot right. She was always saying the wrong, always going but, over but, the but top. But you, you made an interest. She's gone because she was a legal nightmare. Uh, her, her now the reason was a financial, financial issue, that she's costing them too much money, yeah. is always being sort of pulled out for it. So look, I think, I think you're right. It, it, it's not as simple as actually mm. just sort of barking yeah. at the moon every time there's a yeah, controversial absolutely. issue be it immigration or whatever, it's, it's very simple to do that. But actually, we're not in investing in great writing as we once knew it. It's expensive. And what they're learning from Katie Hopkins is the cult of an ex um, television reality television personality yeah, yeah. we're somehow going to bring those television audiences to newspapers and let her spout and let her go where it's much more difficult to have a reasoned and sometimes belligerent argument about a subject because we're not because they're going to be whatever they pay Katie Hopkins arguably they're paying more for little job 
or they're paying oh, more they for do. They Sarah are paying Vine. more for Little John, yeah. They're paying a lot more. So there's an experiment to see whether or not a reality TV star with a bit of a following post Apprentice who actually will say anything to generate a headline. And let's not forget that LBC took her on as well. Oh, exactly. You know, they all got into trouble because there's no... They, they, they're not thinking through the argument. Because she was being so noisy and so provocative, uh, that she was like a bright flame of controversy that millions were attracted to. She's got 650,000 followers on Twitter. Uh, whether, you know, she was a classic case of lover or mostly hater, you couldn't avoid her. And of course the newspapers and the television were drawn to, to that but that's, ability. That's really... but, they, but they never think this stuff through. And of course all of those who really went the, the full nine yards, i.e. the Daily Mail who hired her on a big contract, LBC who hired her on a, as a twice a week controversial host, they caught massive colds. And they go, oh my God, we've got to get rid of this. We've got to dump this girl. You so, said something which I think is really, basically we are in the, the age, the parameters of Marmite brands. Yeah. You know, the Marmite brands cut above the noise. What newspapers and the old media have actually forgotten, it's quite difficult to actually get above the noise. So a blunt instrument makes noise and magnetise all these people towards them. And that supposedly is, in a sense, is clickbait. Um, and, and I think that instead of actually building that through you know, whatever, you, whatever your view on a little John or a little is, you know, it's a long-term investment in journalism to generate an argument and a point. What you're doing with the likes of Katie is actually giving someone a megaphone and screaming from the highest building without any thought. And it's sort of summoning all this traffic to your site, all this clickbait to your site, not recognising the consequences. And the £250,000 you possibly play, it's not a bad investment to a certain extent, but ultimately you get your feet and your very, very dirty from actually wading through this sewer. Yeah, because and that you're abrogating the basic fact that, I know it's not rocket science, but the best economists are trained journalists. They understand the parameters, they understand the boundaries, and more, most importantly, they understand the legality. You know, I was a columnist for 11 years, and you've got to know your stuff. Katie Hopkins was just some girl who was on The Apprentice, that with an ability to say very controversial, basically unpleasant things that caused a big storm, and but everyone who hired her got their hands, their fingers burned it's a, it's, very it's, badly. It's a throwaway burger so in a polystyrene case, isn't so, it? So rather, you know, pom rather pompously, yes. as a trained journalist, I'd like to say, please, Daily Mail, LBC, don't hire any more amateurs, eh? Listen, we're not doing this for an elongated new way of actually relaunching your career, or maybe we are. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> hoping for. <laughs>